Hello, everyone. Thank you for coming uh, for this talk about Kube Edge. So my name is Inding. I currently work in Google. So my co-speaker, Hongbing, he didn't make it due to the visa delay. So there's only be me today. Thank you, everyone, to come. So I'm going to talk about uh, Kube Edge architecture user cases and brief you guys about the recent update we have made in the project. First, very exciting note. So we are graduated. <laughs> so uh, last month, we just graduated formally and by the CNCF. Thank you, everyone. <laughs> Thank you for all the contributors. Thank you for the TC uh, TOC members for their uh, very good feedback for us, help us to improve and to make our community thrive. So uh, hopefully you guys did make, uh, my talk is Friday, but the celebration ceremony was yesterday. Hopefully you guys made it. This uh, was a popcorn blow up and all the ribbons. So hopefully you made it. So if they can make this happen before my talk, that would be great. But <laughs> whether it's, thank you, thank you everyone. Hopefully you made it to support our project. Uh, let's quickly see, uh, this is a long journey for our project. So it was started from 2018. So we started from the Kubernetes SIG as the working group, it's not called a SIG, so for the edge. Then we launched our project in November 2018 and we donated this one to CNCF in uh, 2019 uh, March, and it's become a sandbox project. And we became a incubation project in 2020. And so this is a long journey. We make all the kind. I want to emphasize a few very impressive user cases we have made. And in 2021, September, uh, we make a to the vehicle. So there's a smart vehicle. There's some manufacturer use our framework to deploy their app to the vehicle. And in 2021, in the KubeCon, I think the Europe, so I think in Barcelona, I must stand. <clears throat> so we uh, did a talk to demonstrate we made to the satellite. So we deploy our edge node in the satellite in the very string resource strange environment and the very strained bandwidth, so very impressive. And another worth to mention is the uh, 2023 in January, we, become, we became the first CNCF project to achieve SL, uh, SLSA level three security. And finally, in uh, last month, we officially graduated. Thank you for all the contributors. So let me quickly brief the project background. And so for the edge, the, our, you know, we, uh, the inspiration is a, this uh, two kind of uh, edge. One is a uh, near edge, the other one is called a regional edge. So for far, far edge, it's basically very close to the user. It's less than probably um, 50 kilometers and uh, the latency is low, is one to five millisecond. But for the regional edge, is probably provided by the either ISP or the telecom. So it's called the regional edge. Typically, it's deployed in the regional data center. It's about 50 to 200 kilometers away from the user. And the latency will be longer, but still less than 10 millisecond. Then we go to the cloud. That's the backbone the ISP provided. Based on the latencies, so they have a different user cases. <clears throat> for the far edge or near side edge, is basically is good for AR, VR, or, uh, or AR inference. But for the regional edge, the typical user case is the CDN. So uh, they, either, they are for the CDN to store the content and also do the video uh, decoding or transcoding or rendering for the user. 
And for the cloud, definitely it's uh, for big data, for training. And of course, so you can also use the also unlimited resource to do the inference and you do the uh, transcoding as well. <coughs> so basically our idea is uh, we deploy the similar cloud control plane in the Kubernetes control plane on the cloud side and all the edge node will deploy on the edge side. So I'm going to go to the architecture a little bit later. And uh, so our goal is a consistent, all this uh, application experience and the consistent resource management, consistent device management from the cloud side. So currently we have a very active uh, community and we, in the GitHub we get more than 7,600 stars, more than 2,000 forks, forks on the GitHub and we have more than uh, 1,500 contributors. So for the code, it's uh, more than 350 code committers uh, from, I mean, a variety of organizations, more than 100. So let me do a quick introduction and update of our project. So here is the, our architecture. You can see we deploy our control plane similar to uh, Kubernetes on the cloud. And you can um, actually mix your edge node and your cloud node in the same cluster. So the, the cloud node is no different from, uh, no different from the uh, Euro Kubernetes deployment. However, for the edge node, is in, as the previous slide I show, you can either deploy in the regional edge node or the far edge or near side edge, uh, edge node. So the difference is we set up a uh, duplex communication channel and either WebSocket, that's by default, but if you want to use Quick, you can do that. So we support that too, uh, we give a solution. So we, um, based on the, on the node, we have a, a build our own edge core and in the edge side, we have our cloud core. So that's handle the communication between the cloud and the edge. So this communication channel, WebSocket, is initiated from the edge side. So it set up the uh, two-way communication channel between edge and the cloud. So this way we solve the problem because when you bring up a edge node, you're either behind either your firewall or gateway, probably you don't have a public IP. So you cannot, I mean, control that directly from cloud side. So we set up this uh, boot up, uh, a bootstrap uh, process to initiate the connection from the edge side and to set up this 2V communication channel to control uh, the edge node you register. And also we use this mosquito pop stop model to control the device attached to the edge. So you have a uh, seamless experience you can manage your device transparently from your cloud side. So our goal is say, instead of the old embedded development for your device, so now you can do your uh, cloud application development, then you push your application to the device. So we achieve this seamless cloud edge coordination and the device management, simplify this device management and the communication. And also we have this uh, edge autonomous, autonomous because the edge core can auto restart application, everything is similar to the experience you have in the Kubernetes. So what's new? So we, uh, after graduation, I mean, even though it's just a uh, a few weeks ago, we managed to have our new 1.19 release in October. Here is some improvement we have. The first one, uh, we support uh, edge node event, uh, is edge node report event. So you know Kubernetes events serve as a report of an event somewhere in the cluster, right? So you reflect the status change of a cluster resource, such as a node and a pod, before 119, we may not, I mean, re reflect that and unless you log into the node. 
but from 119, you can support, we support this uh, reporting the event to the cloud. So basically from cloud, you can see the events and allow the user directly to achieve this status from the cloud side. I mean, you can get status of a pod or a node. And here the command is you can do the similar thing, you the Kuba control get event and or the Kuba control describe resource tab, resource name. However, uh, one thing we, you need to notice, by default, this feature is disabled. So, but you, you can enable it, uh, use a command. Uh, you can read uh, in our uh, release uh, notes, but let me know if you have any questions. It's uh, clearly in our doc, say, you need to, I mean, explicitly you know, enable this feature. And the second one, we support um, the OTA upgrade for Edge Node. And on the basics, uh, basis, it's a node upgrade job. Up, we upgrade this job, so uh, we add a node, edge node confirmation card point to, validation, uh, to validate the image digest. So uh, we still let user to final confirm uh, how, I mean, if you want to finalize, re upgrade this node or not. So, this image can be downloaded to the edge node first, and only we perform the upgrade until the user is confirmed. So we validate the image digest to ensure this packet image, I mean, is you are intended to ensure the security and the reliability on the edge node side. So we use this um, spec.image digest getter in a node, uh, in this our node upgrade job, define how you get this dig image digest. The value is uh, defined in the digest. The, we have another register API to get a mirror digest via registry v2 API. Uh, both, I mean, mutually uh, inclusive. So if the node is config the image digest is not verified during the upgrade. And then we can, uh, then the user can use the spec that require confirmation to config, uh, to config the require confirmation for node upgrade job to determine if you want to confirm upgrade on the edge side. The third one is the mapper for uh, device data writing. So we have a new uh, device method API and improve our device data writing. So uh, the new device method API is a de definition of a device method added to our current, the 119 release. And the user can define device method in device instant file that can be called outside the world in the, in the device. Through this device method, the user can control and write data to the device property. And for device data writing, we upgrade our um, Mapper API to improve a new interface. So the user can use relevant interface to obtain from all device methods contained in the device as well calling the command of the device method. Through this return calling command, the user can create a device, device write request to write data to the device. Another improvement we added to this release is, is the open telemetry to mapper framework. So this can encapsulate the device data and push data in to multiple types of application and databases. So this feature can invest, uh, enhance our current mapper data plane ability to push your data to the device. And the last one, not the least, is our improved dashboard. So here is the, our newest dashboard. So we rewrite this in Node.js and um, MUI. In the new release, we rewrote the optimized about 60 pages in the dashboard and reduce about 70% uh, the redundancy code. And also we upgrade Kube Edge and the native Kubernetes API to the latest version to maintain this compatibility and also add TypeScript definition for our APIs. That's our most recent release.
So here is a quick introduction is uh, how we manage this our SIG in our community focus on device management. So it's defined in, it's defined the, how we manage the device. So it's the enlargement of our previous, how you can um, map, use pop sub method to map the device as a, a metadata to control a device. So our mapper support video streaming, data reporting. So that's the uh, SIG IoT. Uh, this is a SIG node is our, I think last year we support, uh, we created this SIG focus on to support to edge node. So we uh, support the image pre-pool and we, uh, the previous one, the uh, the upgrade is also from our uh, SIG node. They are focusing on the edge node architecture. If you are interested, you can participate in the SIG node discussion. Uh, networking, we do the edge, we call the edge mesh, is our uh, focusing on the uh, edge network. Uh, this one should be a topic for my co-speaker. Unfortunately, he didn't make it. So, but if you have any questions, uh, I'm happy to help or direct it to the person you are want to learn about it. One thing I want to support, uh, point out is that we support level four and the level seven traffic management. And also we are doing the integration with the East Hill for service governance. I think there was a couple of uh, talk uh, with the Cillian about the eBPF for the, uh, for the monitoring and uh, networking. Uh, I will add this uh, later, the, the talk link. So the six security is that I mentioned, we are the first CNCF project to reach level three of a supply chain level for software architecture. So here is a report. If you are interested, you can learn this, the QR code. Uh, we are very proud to to provide a secure architecture for our customers, users. So next topic I want to cover is the AI. So we have our uh, AI SIG in our community. They are focusing on, say, uh, how we handle the edge AI. Uh, first, uh, one of the project we have is called the Sedina. Sedina. So it's a distributed AI for collaboration. So we support this a cloud and edge collaborated AI. Uh, AI. So uh, we support all current AI application to uh, push to the edge seamlessly. And so you can see we support a joint inference, increment learning, federated learning. Uh, I will show a little more detail in the following slides. And we are open ecosystem. And we support TensorFlow, PyTorch, Pedal Pedal, Mind, Sprawl. And we provide extended this API for the developer to quickly integrate the third party algorithms. So here is some um, uh, characters I want to mention, uh, because in the edge side, typically not like in the cloud, you have a big data, sem uh, data set. You probably, in first is uh, some node, you only have a small data sample or a sample size. And uh, next one is could be heterogeneous architecture. Another one I want to mention is, is it's not balanced. Some node may have a very small uh, data sample, but some node may have a large data sample. So they have a different training results based on your data set, right? Of course, if you have more data, you can train and verify that a little more. But if you have a small size, how you solve this? We have a, a, in the following size, slide I'm talking about collaboration, federated learning. But for this slide, I want to emphasize how in the heterogeneous edge data, how we can, we are 
persisting this data in the node forever. So not only exists in the memory. So if you have some failures happen, the old the, the node is down or lost. So we already persistent this uh, knowledge accumulated in the edge in the storage. So you can uh, migrating this problem to uh, it's a catastrophic uh, forgetting we solve this problem because we are persistent in this knowledge you already uh, accumulated. Uh, this I'm talking about uh, a few things, right? Uh, the data size is not balanced. Some There are big data size, small data size, how you can uh, federate the learning, I mean, basically learn together. So uh, first things, uh, one thing we want to do in the Edge AI, because we want to data privacy, or we don't want to have our raw data or uh, learning data out of your IH node. So you only want your, I mean, the model go up or something. So that's why uh, you want to keep your data within your Edge. So our purpose is uh, to retain this for the federated learning to keep your data in the Edge, not, I mean, publish it in the cloud for your privacy. And also we support, you can develop your learning or training method on the cloud, then we help you to deploy this training to the cloud, so you, uh, to the edge. So you don't need to, I mean, develop a more particular training for the small edge. You can do that in the cloud side and for easy debugging and thing. We, uh, in Kube Edge, we push this training to the edge. And we do multi-task detection. We divide this non-IID sample set and cooperate with the cloud and to, read, to identify the small task, right? We, um, on the cloud side, we collaborate and identify the similar task and we uh, improve the I mean, different small model to, to the big model. And, and also, uh, maybe I will talk to the other one. Uh, so we support you only train on your edge side, and you only upload your uh, model metadata parameter to the cloud. And the cloud is just, I mean, accumulate all the model from different edge and develop a uh, cooperation method to aggregate this model together to a more efficient model. So the benefit is this a joint inference. Uh, for the inference, we do the joint inference. For example, um, the AI developer, you uh, provide data to train in the deep model and the shallow model. So in the business model, uh, business developers to call this inference model through our uh, Selena lib library and deploy them to the edge. So what's the benefit? So uh, in the edge, you do your own training method and you create a shallow model on the edge. So if the confidence level reach your threshold, so you can directly use this, I mean, shallow model for your inference. And it's very fast, right? Because the edge node is close to the user and you already have this train, trained model, you can use that for the inference. You can, re if user want to do the inference, then you can return your uh, inference result directly to the user. However, if you, not reach your threshold, right? You are not confident enough, so you upgrade your model back to the cloud. Cloud is, I mean, aggregate all the model from different edge together and to aggregate to a bigger model. So, and in the edge side, you, if you don't have that uh, confident enough, the shallow model, you, I mean, pass user request to the cloud. The cloud you use, you're the aggregated, the, the, the uh, bigger model to inference and the return result to the customer. So we did have this one of example in the LF Acrino uh, project. We did a one a POC to show a uh, 
image recognition AI model, uh, AI example. So basically, the shadow model in the edge side. So if you reach your confident level, we return the inference result back to you. We recognize, oh, this uh, one person who's, I mean, what's the type of the, the image. But sometimes we are not confident, so we pass this one to the cloud to use a more sophisticated model to do the inference and the return to our customer. So we did that one uh, in LF Acrino as one example. If you're interested, you can go to LF Edge Acrino, look for uh, Kube Edge. There is a uh, inference uh, sample case study. So I just want to highlight, uh, I think, three uh, user cases using the uh, Kube Edge to benefit to use the Kube Edge. So first is uh, moving our traditional industry to the cloud native. So basically, um, you can, uh, I talk about, we deploy to the smart car, uh, deploy to the satellite edge node, and for the ETC, I mean the highway toll system, so that's the traditional industry, but we change that to the cloud native. That means you deploy, develop your application on the cloud side and using the Kubernetes, uh, Kubernetes Edge framework to push your application to the Edge side. Another one is the uh, smart retail. It's the same thing, right? So uh, all this... Uh, a smart vending machine, and then we push the application through uh, Kube Edge uh, framework. So there's a very high efficiency, so you don't need to, I mean, go to upgrade your uh, vending machine one by one uh, offline. And also, each store or vending machine will be have their own autonomy, they can restart automatically and make sure it's online. And you can easily maintain that from your cloud side and control it. The last one is very typical for the regional uh, cloud is for how you control your city inside using Kubernetes. Uh, it's, we reach, uh, I think I, I remember we reach about uh, 100,000 uh, edge servers in this ecosystem. Uh, the last part I want to talk about how open our community is and how we support open source. So we are open governance. So here is we have our TSC committees. So we have uh, seven members right now. We is in two years uh, term. So every two years we really like uh, one third of our uh, TSC members, they need to be uh, active contributors or maintainers for the project or sub project in this community. We have this SIG, as I mentioned, we have a uh, device SIG, uh, networking, AI, and such. <clears throat> and we are collaborated in different organizations. This our partnership across uh, different industries, telecom, uh, the uh, public cloud provider, manufacturer, and the traditional industry, and also academic. Uh, also, we collaborated across different open source projects, not only, I mean, within not only in CNCF, we collaborate as a, a Linux foundation. We provide more than 20 projects for the interns or, or mentorship program. So uh, a few college students benefit from our project to accumulate their experience. And we are looking forward to more joint force with other open source projects. As I mentioned, we, talk, we work with uh, Cilian. Uh, on the eBPF, uh, you can see the, uh, there was a few topics um, and the talks about this topic. And we have a lot of partners also 
to create a strong, vibrant cloud native edge computing ecosystem. Yeah, I think 32 minutes. I have about three minutes for the question. Thank, thank you. So if you are interested, you can, I mean, here is our uh, GitHub link. And also, um, this is our Slack. You can join Slack any questions. We have our maintainers to answer your questions. So let's work together, make this cloud native Uber needs. Cool. Thank you. Any questions? Uh, my only uh, maybe one question is: um, Are the slides available um, to get uh, to? Okay. In the schedule website, there will be a link, say presentation, so you you can get your slides over there. Uh, I just want to say this is amazing work, and this is like my domain. And I've never heard of you before. And the work that you're doing is incredible. And thank it you. just made my life so much easier. Yeah, thank you. I'm looking forward to collaborate together. Any more questions? Yeah, if you have more questions, we are in the um, project of Pelevin. That's uh, our booth. So you're welcome to come. I'm happy to answer questions. Thank you. Thank you, everyone.